Hello, it's me, Michael, again from Mint's Finest. This time, again, we are going to see people. We're going to see people that you may know, you may heard of, you may not have heard of. The guy that we're talking to today is Mike Waywell, owner of Still Habit. We've actually done previously an interview at his old gym. Right now, we are in his new gym, asking him questions not directly related to the gym, but it's more to do with how to run your business, how to do Facebook ads, what is the sort of skills that he had to have uh, first before he sort of um, you know could claim a, a, a success in business. Um, you know what sort of marketing skills he had to sort of acquire. What about the team? Uh, and finally, I've asked him a question about why people are still fat. Why am I not sort of super slim and super easy and super nice? Why am I still sort of carrying this fat? I know what to do. I now have to do more sit-up, more pull-ups. Um, so that's that was a very interesting answer. The, the way he answered actually sort of uh, makes a lot of sense, a lot more sense than I thought he's going to make out of it. So uh, enjoy this one. Mike Waywell, Steel Habitat. It's an hour-long interview, but believe me, you're going to learn a lot. Enjoy this one. The, the idea is that um, every week, every day, every other um, sort of episode, either on YouTube or podcast, um, we're going to bring more guests and see you know, who else wants to talk to us. And I thought immediately of you, uh, because you kind of... Uh, this guru guy that, I'm, that I want to become, maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and I think not only I want to be like you, but also Paola wants to be like you, so uh, we need to mention her. <laughs> so uh, she, she already told me that. Yeah, so. sure, she, yeah so you already know this, so that's okay. <laughs> that's, le less, that's less embarrassing. Okay, um, and the idea is that perhaps we can... Um, I've got no questions prepared as such, okay. so we're going to be just sort of rolling. So um, it's going to be about business life, um, sort of state of affairs in terms of like how, why don't people do things? Why people are still fat? Why am I still fat? <laughs> like why am I all shred? Like you know, saying like we have to just see what is there for the people. How whoever is going to be listening to this, thinking that was good value. That was you know I've learned something. I want to I want to implement something. It, it, whatever whether that's going to end up you telling them that they need to buy service from you. Like, it doesn't really matter where that takes us. It's, it's something that, that I'm, I really want to do. So, so bring the sort of you know, style and fashion into it, but that doesn't really matter. But we can also uh, talk about like, how people can better themselves because you know, that, that could be a very interesting topic for people to, uh, to listen to. So I'll do my best. Hopefully, it's going to be half an hour, but maybe it could be 20 minutes. Maybe it's going to be an hour and a half. Cool. Well, yeah, maybe you run out of space yeah. on the cards and <laughs> run out of juice and things to talk about. So, yes, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, for those people who don't know you, like, what would you say? Who, who, who are you? Are you a gym owner? Are you a businessman? Are you an ex rugby player? Uh, uh, now, I'd say. I'm a, technically a gym owner. Uh -huh. I like to think of myself as a businessman. Okay. Um, I feel like the principles of business kind of apply right across. You know, depend. Doesn't mm -hmm. really matter what business you run at the minute. You know, fully focused on the gym and the gyms. So, yeah, yeah I'd say gym owner slash businessman. I am an ex rugby player. That was my identity for a long time. Was a rugby player, but now yeah, definitely business owner. But it's very, it's it's super intriguing. Like very often when we even talk to people, and you even probably done it yourself, where you go to a, a networking event and people don't know you, and the idea is that you tell people what you do, and it's like very interesting to see. Like, oh, how is that? So what do I do? Like who am I in this networking? Like I'm a I'm a gym owner. I'm this. Yeah. Like it's 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 difficult, right? Sometimes you think. Yeah, I know who I am, but you cannot, for instance, or you know your business, and all of a sudden someone asks you what you do, and you're like, um, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, I do this, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy, right? Tendency to downplay things as well. Absolutely, so. yeah. So, uh, so it's very interesting how you sort of 
perceive yourself and how you yeah. tell people because it's it, you know even in social situations you, co you, you know you, you go with your girlfriend somewhere and like oh, what was that you do uh, I'm a business person that, that sounds yeah. cheesy I just uh, say oh, yeah, I, yeah. Own, I own some gyms I own some gyms yeah okay yeah. don't play it a bit <laughs> yeah, <try. laughs> like, don't ask me any more out. questions yeah, yeah. yes okay <laughs> um, okay so um, but this is this is day 1372 of owning a gym it's not you calculate this and yeah I think Absolutely. quickly yeah it's probably not far off right and it's like uh, this is not day one the same as when people look at me and say, oh, I, I like your style. I was like, yeah, but this is not day one. Yeah, like, yeah. this is not how you dress when you want to, you know, go on interview. Like, there are stages, you know, you have to sort of uh, understand, like, how things work and, and what you like, what you don't like. So it's the same for you. Like, you, you obviously gym owner, you business owner, but it's, but you haven't started here. No, so, I, I wasn't a business owner to start with yeah. at all. I, when I opened the gym, hmm. I was definitely just a, a rugby player mm. slash strength coach so I've done a lot of strength and conditioning coaching for athletes and stuff uh -huh. um, and I just back in what back in 2010 uh, we opened the gym in 2012 but uh -huh. before the the last couple of years before that I was still playing rugby but moved to Hong Kong and played rugby there and then before that was playing for file the team in Blackpool whilst mm -hmm. at the same time uh, working as a strength and conditioning coach. So we actually did some steel habitat stuff around them. We used to do strength camps for rugby players during like half terms, some holidays and stuff like that. But my main thing was, uh, I was a strength and conditioning coach for the Sail Sharks rugby uh -huh. academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their base at my high school college. So that was kind of what yeah. I started off. And you thought, yeah. okay, doing coaching is something that you want to do rather than playing? Or yeah. did that part was still like, oh, no, I still want to be good at playing? I still play when I, when I opened the gym, I still played uh -huh. for the first couple of years. Uh -huh. But the, I just, I just wanted to open a gym. I just always wanted to do that. I remember there's a guy called Joe DeFranco, he's like a really popular strength coach. He coaches um, NFL athletes or people who want to be NFL athletes uh -huh. as they prepare for the NFL combined. Uh -huh. And he was quite popular at the time, still is now. Uh -huh. And he was kind of the person that was like, yeah, his style of training and stuff is cool because around that time, like 2009, 10, the, the gyms like this, like steel, weren't really, they weren't really massively around. Like it's quite commonplace now for mm. gyms to have you know, astro turf, kind of artificial grass, mm, mm. have the prowlers and mm. uh, sledgehammers, uh, kettlebells and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't really like a, a big thing around then. Like I said, there's a lot of them now, but it definitely wasn't around then. I just, I thought that mm. was cool. Mm. And obviously from playing professional sports, that was the kind of training that mm. we tended to do at that mm. time. So I was like, I'd like to open a facility like that. And it always felt like something that I would do Later, mm. it was always like, oh yeah, when I'm yeah. older, when I'm yeah. older, when yeah. I'm older, yeah. and uh, I eventually just gave it a go. And How old are you? I was 24 then when wow. I opened the gym. Okay. So okay. what happened was uh, I'd moved to play rugby in Hong Kong. Mm. I didn't work out as well as I hoped. Um, but gave like, you enough capital to sort of start thinking nah, about this? No, nah. <laughs> Okay, so it wasn't, okay, interesting. No, because, sorry, that, because that's important to sort of put that in perspective that you didn't earn millions there, so you could start thinking, oh, what do I do when I come back? Yeah, like nah, you still nah. have to figure it out, right? Yeah, absolutely. And when I come back, I um, actually opened, no, I didn't open, sorry. I started uh, lecturing at a university course mm -hmm. uh, at a university slash college in Preston. Uh -huh. So I was uh, lecturing sports coaching and like sports science kind of stuff up there. And then we got to the end of the year and I had 300 odd of the same assignment to mark. Jesus, okay. just, yeah, yeah, of course, that's and your... I, was just, that's... I just hated it basically. Yeah, yeah. So when, uh, when that kind of wrapped up, I decided, you know, I don't want to do that. I've never mm. really worked for anyone other than as a, an mm -hmm. athlete mm -hmm. or a coach and mm -hmm. even like, in both of those, you're quite autonomous mm. in a way. You're still being like guided on what to do, but you have to figure it out. Yeah, you're in yourself. control of yourself, mm. kind mm. of thing. So I didn't enjoy that experience of working as a lecturer and having to like sit in the office, like marking papers and uh -huh. uh, going to like assessment days and marking other colleges and universities' papers to check they were doing it right. I was just like, this is not like <laughs> <laughs> not what I want to do. Uh -huh. So I kind of wrapped that up and. 
uh, it was Lee, my missus, mm-hmm. who kind of pushed me into. She was like, well, "Just, just do it. Like, if you mm. want to open a gym, just give it a go." Mm. And as you know, we opened the first one as a, a mm. tiny little facility. I actually just borrowed four grand off my dad, so that's all we started with. Mm. We bought all second-hand equipment and mm. stuff. And mm. like we were saying at the start, like at that point, I was not a business owner at all. I wasn't a businessman. Didn't really know any business principles. I just wanted to have a gym. Mm. <clears throat> and then obviously, you quickly learn after you open mm. a gym and uh, it's not making any money. <laughs> you got to figure out all the business uh-huh, stuff and the marketing uh-huh, and everything. Uh-huh. It took me maybe a year to really like fully properly realize that I needed to become that kind of person because mm. I was lucky in a way that I was still playing semi-professional rugby at that point. So that was paying a lot of my bills and stuff. Mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. was helpful, but mm-hmm. at the same time, also didn't put a lot of pressure on me to like, make the business work straight away because I was, I was getting it's super important right it's super important for people to understand that the opening the business is not like my business like it's in the background for the last three years it's yeah. just literally right now when I'm doing this sort of shift yeah. where it completely sort of moves to to men's finest and I think that's strategy for 95 percent of people like yeah, you, yeah. if you don't do that you have to either borrow money very quickly or you have to be lucky in a way that you get something really quickly, something that people really want and you can deliver and they're going to pay, for, you know, yeah, pay yeah. all the bills for you. So, so it's, it's, it's super, and it's very interesting that you obviously went the same route. So maybe yeah. that's the route that, you know, more people should, should try to follow yeah. rather than follow that dream. Oh, I've got my own company. You can put the business card, say owner, and then what? Yeah, right, and and then like you have to figure things out, or you live your mum, which is still costing you money, and you know like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think like to start with a you know, obviously you know you got to put effort in. Mm. Like it wasn't like I wasn't trying at all, mm. but it was also just like, I guess I had the mentality of oh, I'll open a gym, it'll be different, it'll be cool. Mm-hmm. I'm a rugby player, mm-hmm. so like that's a different thing for around here, and pe- people will just come. Um, you think that that's going to be a rugby player's gym? To start off with, yeah, we were, that, that right? was our main thing. I was yeah. like, okay. that's going to be a gym for athletes. I think if you look back at our original like uh, social media stuff, uh-huh. it says stuff like that, like yeah. the, gym, okay. the gym for athletes in Liverpool uh-huh. and stuff. Because uh-huh. um, that's the people who I'd served mm. and mm. been up until that point. So I was, and probably I was they that knew as a coach. Well. Mm. Some people might have known my name as a rugby player mm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I'll mm-hmm. go down that route. Mm-hmm. Still inspired by Joe DeFranco, mm-hmm. wanting to work with athletes mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. But again, you quickly realise that there's not enough, uh, there's not necessarily enough athletes in Liverpool who want to pay for strength and conditioning coaching to make it a really formidable kind of business because yeah, exactly. in America, it's a much bigger thing. And they don't necessarily always have strength and conditioning support. Whereas here, if you're, <clears throat> if you're good at sport um, and you're the kind of person who would be interested in doing strength and conditioning mm. whilst you're like a, a youth athlete, then mm. you're going to have support from whatever club or academy that you're mm. working with kind of thing. So that kind of dilutes the potential pool of clients even further because, you know, the, of the like 30 rugby players that might be thinking about it in the area, 20 of them are already linked to another club or an academy exactly. who are going to yeah, help yeah. them get the support that they need. So we realised that, <coughs> but also realised oh. that like that approach to training and that style of training can be adapted to Normal what people. you, yeah, the general population, mm-hmm. I guess you'd classify mm-hmm. it as. Mm-hmm. Um, How quickly you've realised that a part of what you're going to do is going to solely depend on how you build your brand online, how you're perceived on Facebook or, or Google Ads. I don't know if you've used Google Ads or any other medium yeah. of that sort, but, but I know Facebook was big for you. I know um, yeah. you were very open about this and the, how much money you spend on yeah, Facebook yeah. ads and things like that. But it's... Um, um, I think I got into Facebook ads pretty early mm-hmm. in terms of like using them to generate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. new customers, people to apply to join the gym and stuff like that. Do you think it's still possible for people to get good results on Facebook? You know, we are 2018, uh, Facebook is obviously matured right now, Absolutely. even though, you know, it's yeah. maybe five years old in terms of ads and, you know, where, where, that, where that sort of the whole monetization on Facebook is happening. Absolutely. In, in the fitness industry, it's difficult to lose at Facebook ads, in my opinion. Okay. And if you are, if you are losing at Facebook ads, you, you've probably like messed something up. 
mm. or you haven't put the time and effort into learning mm. fully how to make best use mm-hmm. of that because with the right kind of marketing funnel and the right sort of ad copy mm-hmm. and initial offer and upselling to programs and membership and stuff like that it's very difficult not okay. to make a return on investment. But in that one sentence, you probably said everything what a business should do, any business for that matter. Yeah. You know, marketing, funnels, uh, upselling, you know, understanding copy. Like, this is a bakery should do the same or a, or a butcher should do the same. Like, yeah, there I is, mean, uh, like, there's fundamentals in there that you said. Yeah, I mean, for... How, how a butcher learns this or how a, um, Everyone can a, a, learn hair, a hairdresser, yeah. you know, a hair salon, how do they generate more leads? You know, if anyone is sort of into that and all of a sudden like, I want to be like Mike, how, how do they do, like, yeah. what do they do? Where do they start? I mean, I'm not sure in terms of like how you can make a definite uh-huh. return on investment on, in those industries. Hmm. So hmm. in terms of specific advice for like a butcher, yeah. like, I wouldn't know specifically how that would work in terms of like numbers coming back and everything. But the actual process of developing marketing strategies and um, even like Facebook ads and copy and all mm. that, like it's, a, it's fairly uh, universal in my mm. opinion from mm. the people I've spoken to and worked with and stuff mm. like that. <clears throat> and I think it's just a case of getting out and trying to learn it from the right kind of people. I always say like the best way to succeed at anything is to find someone who has achieved what you want to achieve mm. and preferably has coached or shown a mm. number of other people how to do that too and they've had success and then get them to show you how there'll to be, do there'll it. be lots of people especially if you're looking online uh, i'm sure you're going to find examples of people who are just telling you they can help you or the the program well, that you're going to buy to out, yeah right? but it's yeah. like it's going to be difficult to sort of find out who's the who's the, the one to follow who is the one to sort of yeah, you sure. know um, everyone wants to have shortcuts and I'm, and I'm sure that whoever again is going to be thinking of starting a business or doing anything in any sort of business space they're going to be thinking okay where do I go where, where do I start like you have to figure out things before I, I, I don't know what, what, what would you say every business should have like, like a butcher or hairdresser without, without going to specifics but, but in a way that what do they have to do in order to have a, a successful sort of business what, what, what would they have to do in terms of marketing or, or is it is it local newspaper advertising better for them or doesn't exist anymore? Like, what would you say everyone should do Facebook? Facebook uh, ads? And my, everyone should learn this? In my opinion, Facebook ads is like the best platform at the, at that we have at the minute. It has mm-hmm. the most data on mm-hmm. your potential okay. audience as possible. So like, as an example, if you don't know, like you, let's say you put a, I know you understand this, but like for people listening, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you put a, uh, an advert in a in a newspaper mm-hmm. so you're just kind of putting it out it's kind of like a just hit and hope kind of thing hope mm-hmm. that the right people kind yes. of see it uh-huh. hope they read the page hope they take it yes. you know whatever yeah. and you don't know how many people came to you from the newspaper ad mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. whereas with Facebook ads obviously you can go uh, you can target who sees your advert or content mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. right down to age location mm-hmm. demographic mm-hmm. interests mm-hmm. like you can you can do uh, income on some things yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So <clears throat> you're able so it can to be very specific. Yes, yeah, so mm-hmm. specific, and you're able to then appear in the palm of the hand of the person who's most likely to be interested in mm-hmm. your business or your flowers content, or like that. you know whatever. Because there'll be plenty of because <coughs> you must have heard that as well plenty of times. You were saying Facebook ads don't work or don't yeah, work well, for me. They're wrong. So yeah, they, they, you know <laughs> that's true, right? But, yeah. but it's like there's so many people saying this and. It, why would they say this? It's probably, I mean, you know, an assumption would be that they haven't taken the time or effort to fully understand all the nuances of it and how it works and how do to you make do it work ads yourself or do you? Yeah, I do all the marketing right. stuff myself. I think that's something that I'm reasonably well versed at and confident with. So I just, I tend to get stuck into that. It doesn't take me a lot of time anymore to do it either. So mm-hmm. I'm quite happy doing that. But people who say that they don't work are generally the people who spent like. 10 quid on one advert or 20 quid on a couple of adverts and then go nothing happened. <clears throat> yeah nothing happened it's like well you know what was your call to action what was your copy like what mm. were you trying to achieve by the advert mm. like just boosting a link to your website and say mm. oh, inbox me for details like that kind of thing mm. really going to get you anywhere it's, mm. it's still just a tool like it's not the be all and end all of everything it's a tool that fits within like the overall business system mm. you're not going to just solely run Facebook ads and mm. um 
you know, have a successful business. Like we, I've said to you before, you know, like Facebook ads plays a big part in our marketing strategy, but that's all it is. And if, if Facebook ads, Facebook, which isn't going to happen, but if it disappeared, mm. we'd plug something else into that mm. part of the strategy. Mm. It wouldn't cause the business to crumble because mm. it's just part of like the lead generation process. So it's basically it's where people are, way. right? It's where people hang out. And if you figure out that for your, <laughs> You know, business, whatever people hang out more on Twitter or LinkedIn or somewhere else. That's where you would sort of put the efforts in into yeah. either advertising or actually doing the native yeah. posts or whatever else, right? Yeah, and pretty much everyone's on Facebook. Some like six billion users yeah. on Facebook. So, especially in the Western world, you yeah. know, that's where that's where you know your target audience perhaps is. Yeah, absolutely. Because you think for us, let's say someone's never heard of us before, we put a piece of content out there. Mm-hmm. And we can pay to advertise that to people within a four mile radius of this location. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we know they're in the right spot, yes. they, they're yeah. in the area to get to the gym. Yeah. And then we can go between the ages of like, let's say 22, 44, it's kind of our rough demographic mm-hmm. of, of age. So we're getting the right age kind of people. Then if it's gender specific content, mm-hmm. we can target that gender. Yeah, yeah. And then we can be like, all right, so now we've got age, demographic, gender, um, location, mm-hmm. and then we're like, and I also want it to only show to people who are interested in strength training, mm-hmm. nutrition, you know, like those kind of things. I was talking yesterday to another gentleman <laughs> uh, from the Wirral, uh, and we were chatting about how his business is going, and, and his business is going, they're doing okay, and you know, he's got more like a 35 pounds a month kind yeah. of gym. Uh, but look, literally sort of big open space, similar to yours, but it's like, you know. Yeah, um, I've seen Chris's gym. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's, we were talking about it, and he said, oh, I've, I've seen, uh, ads for Steel Hammers all the time and he says oh, I'm seeing John all the time and I'm thinking okay how often do you actually show the ads to people who A already know you seen you uh, like you don't have to show the ads to him like you know say yeah. like you don't like what's the aim for you I'm sure you spend enough money for everyone in Liverpool to see your ads already yeah. three times like is it for you to sort of keep banging on that drum to make sure that people I still remember you, so if they're at any point interested in the gym, they're gonna they're gonna yeah, find you. Is, is, is that the? That's part of it, because I think. So it's more like a oh. like a like a tool where bring people into your funnel. It's more like awareness kind of thing. Yeah, right? it's it's both. So okay. like, we think we want to be like top of mind awareness for people all the time. So at that point, not everyone's ready to join the gym mm-hmm. or start even mm-hmm. train or join any gym the first time they see mm-hmm. a piece Oops. of fitness content yeah. from us. So. Like they're not ready to buy a bow tie or a yeah, exactly. square or a tie or I anything think, else. I think it's something like, I'm not sure the exact mm. number, but I think it's like seven to nine mm. contacts mm. before mm. people yeah. will like make that first purchase or mm-hmm. application mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So for us, that serves as a good, we get to put content out there and often it's linked to like our website somewhere, a blog post or whatever. Mm-hmm. So then they see our content on Facebook and Facebook can then add them to a video viewers audience. So we know we've got like, technically we have a list of people who've watched all of our videos or mm-hmm. watched uh, one of our videos. Yeah. <coughs> and then if and they then go- we can just remarket it to them. Yeah, and if they go to the website, there's opt-ins on there for eBooks and videos and yeah. stuff like that. So we might capture their email address and then we have their permission to send them mm-hmm. more like content via email, mm-hmm. um, which allows us to have more of those touch points. So if you're aiming for like seven to nine touch points, it's like, We've seen a video, that's one. You've hit the website and read a blog post, mm-hmm. that's two. You've opted in and we've sent you the thing, mm-hmm. that's three. Mm-hmm. And then we're emailing you, you know, yeah. two, three, four times a week. So when you um, see that ad again, <coughs> or you land on the website again, you've got to be, yeah, let's do that free. Yeah, and whatever we're, session exactly. And then you've got all those things. And then when the moment comes when you're like, you know what, I really want to do something about yeah. losing weight or building muscle or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, and who are you going to go to? The yeah. you know the gym that maybe you could, you might see on a Google search, or yeah. the gym that like you see one piece of content from six months ago, or the one that's always there in your email mm. inbox, mm. giving you good value on your Facebook news feed, mm. giving you good value. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and then by having those people in our email list, then we can retarget those with an offer, so the people mm. who watched our videos might then see. An advert for like mm. a 30 day trial, a free session, but six okay. week program, wherever it might be. But all of that, would you say, requires capital? What if someone 
either things of starting a business or they are they know what they, they want to do they know that they want to be florist or a beauty technician whatever they are right consultants and but they haven't got capital what they can do right like what would you say there's one thing that they should be focusing on getting more capital <laughs> uh, borrowing money uh, or, well, or, that, or you know earning money somewhere else it, to, to build that capital to spend it in that specific example that this is like not not a trick but a way you can like make that work is you set your facebook ad account to only charge you when you get to like 600 pound in ad spend mm -hmm. so then you got free facebook ads up until that 600 pound bill mm -hmm. comes so then you all you're trying to do then at that point is make more than 600 pound mm -hmm. from your facebook ads mm -hmm. in that period so mm -hmm. just, if you spend like say 10 pound a day mm -hmm. you've got maybe nine weeks of facebook ads yeah. to make 600 quid mm -hmm. So then in that period, before you start spending on ads, you like learn what Facebook copy is, create what your offer is gonna be, mm -hmm. you know, do all those mm -hmm. things so you can be effective. And then you go through that process we kind of just talked about, mm -hmm. of put some content out there so people can read, mm -hmm. watch, you know, absorb Always the direct them back to the website or, or consuming that on Facebook is still okay? Like, consuming it on Facebook is fine. We have a lot of stuff that doesn't have links in, but then mm -hmm. those people who've watched like the video will get a retargeted ad mm. saying, you know, you've watched 50% of this video. Obviously, you don't say that in the coffee, but you know, you've watched 50% of the video, so we're going to show them this advert of for our 30 day trial. And then if they join the 30 day trial, and that costs £79, mm -hmm. so let's say we get one application a day mm -hmm. and we spend £10 a day on Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. So you get seven applications over the week, you might sign, let's say, three of those up. That's three times 79, mm. whatever that works mm. out. Mm. My maths is terrible, 200 mm. and some of quid. Mm. Um, but you only spent 10 pounds a day. So in a week mm. you've spent 70 pounds mm. and you've made mm. 79 times three back. So that's how you're yeah. winning at Facebook ads straight away. And um, because you've set your ad account up to not bill you until you get to 600 pounds. You, you, you get to see that money <laughs> yeah. before you have to pay you've not, you've not spent anything yet. It's, you know a, I mean? it's, so, a, it's a good tip. I didn't know about this. So, yeah, uh, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to be asking Jamie right now to change it for me. And it's like, Jamie, don't bill me until we get yeah, to That's a good, I mean, we, yeah. for us, we set up to bill more regularly than that. So we know when it's coming out and everything. But mm. that's like a little way around. Are you it. open about how much you spend in a month on Facebook ads? Or is it, it No, no, it varies massively depending on whether what our goal is at that mm -hmm. point like the last couple of weeks we've been fairly averagely pushing a 30 day trial so we're trying to get some applications mm -hmm. um, but not a huge amount and then when we were in like a specific program like a six month program six week or whatever then we you know we'll up the ad spend and spend a lot more but it's all still with a set return on investment kind of planned mm -hmm. out if that makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it varies uh, a low month is like four hundred pounds. A high month can be fifteen hundred, maybe a little bit more. But it's all driven by the results. So it's like you're spending fifteen hundred, but that's because it's giving you the return off yeah, exactly. whatever, right? It's not because you are just what a. I know I was, I was listening to someone the other day, a content uh, from from an influencer. And he was saying, uh, I can't remember who that was. Maybe it was Gary V. I can't remember. But he was saying that he's putting co um, copy and ads. I think it was Gary. He said it's in Peru. He was like, I've never been in Peru in my life. But what I'm trying to do is, is getting that content translated into Spanish, put in the, you know, Peru Facebook, put lots of ads in there yeah. and then see what happens. But then he says, and then I'm going to fly to Peru and see what happens. And you think, this is like, why would you want to do this? <laughs> but okay, okay, he's doing exactly what you, you, you say in the way that okay, he's spending that money, but he knows what he wants in return. Like, it's not just, you know, for the shout out, it's not yeah. for, like, he knows exactly why he's there. And putting, like, why would he want to do, ever yeah, do that? that? That's a but perfect point. Yeah. Like, like I said earlier, you mm. have to know, mm. like, what you're doing it and what you're trying to achieve. Mm. Otherwise, it will feel like Facebook ads don't work. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you just boost a random post, it needs to fit in with, like, your overall strategy. So when we spend, mm. you know, towards the top end of, of what we sometimes spend in our budget, well, not even our budget really, mm. but like we know what our planned return on investment mm. is, so it's it's not really mm. a cost, yeah. Per yeah se. It's just like we need to put this out in order to get this in return. And like, even our worst marketing campaigns with like our very worst one, we broke even on it. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And wow. like, that was when we ran a launch for a program and, and had one person sign up, but we still broke even on it because they joined on a six month program. But I wonder if you are some sort of um. Facebook ad sensation. No. That you, like, you, but it's true, right? Like, 
how do you like can anyone do this i like, would say so yeah. okay like just start by going in uh facebook facebook wants you to succeed at this okay. because you spend more it's money important, right? yeah because if i spend 10 pound and go facebook ads don't work and then never spend another yeah. 10 pounds it's not really helping them but yeah. if i'm spending 400 to a grand and a half a month well they're probably quite and happy then you're raving right? about it yeah and then yeah. other people know exactly. about it as well yeah. there's so. other people that spend mm. six figures a month on facebook mm. ads you know big big companies and mm. stuff so they want you to succeed so just start if you don't know what you're doing by like use the facebook tutorials you yeah. know what I mean? like no, it, blair it, knows it, and it's then super important where to start because it's going to be plenty of people who heard uh, you know the sort of horror stories of Facebook ads not working. Then you get a big bill. Yeah. It's like, oh, what do I do? You know, I've been scammed or whatever else. You know, <laughs> you, you, you hear it all the time. Okay, so you've got the Facebook sorted. You know what you're doing. Uh, you've got your idea for the business. How do you get clients? Like, okay, do you get clients only online? Do you ever go to networking? Do you ever talk to people personally? Like, how, or is it all online? Or is it all happening uh, online? We switch I'd, onto online from. I'd say it's primarily physical. online, yeah. Because, okay. um, like we said before, it's mm -hmm. the easiest place for us anyway to target mm -hmm. people okay. um, and get the right kind of clients and put our stuff in front of the right potential clients. So because even the sort of high that. end um, uh, sort of personal coaching that you sell, you still sell them online. You don't actually go and meet <clears> people <throat> and like talk to them about the not, benefits of. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. We don't intentionally do that, obviously, mm -hmm. when we're. You know, we, we talk to people, we have links with other businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. But generally, a lot of our like relationship building is done online. And it's not to say that doing it offline uh, can't work, it certainly can. But we've just kind of gone all in on that because we found that we can make that work. Yeah. And it does work. Okay. But to go alongside that is like, it wouldn't work as well as it does for us if people weren't having a great experience whilst they were here. So, a lot of people who come in, they might have seen our ad on Facebook, but they're coming in based on, oh yeah, my friend comes here, or I've heard a lot of good things, or you know, wherever. Mm. So it's, you know, it's not just about putting a, a decent advert out and get people through the doors. You've got to deliver the right experience and service and what people expect, well above what people expect to make that happen. So whilst that ads is technically how we track things, you know, a large portion of people who come to us I've not just seen an advert, they know now anyway that we're like nearly five years into it. They know someone who's been here or, you know, all those kind of things. Mm, mm. But you said the job is yeah. referral based, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. well you established a name already, but that obviously <coughs> is with 40 grand or whatever you spend on the yeah, ad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Over the years, so. But yeah, so um, back to your, I guess, your uh -huh. original question mm. a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we got into that and I just got to understand Facebook ads well because mm. I could see how mm how much that could affect us positively, but from mm. the branding side of things, like, we don't really have a brand, mm -hmm. um, I said, until, uh, probably, definitely, maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. Two years ago at the you most. Think? Yeah, because, I mean, before we moved to the, the big gym, uh -huh. we have in uh -huh. Seaforth now, like, we still had spray paint on the walls, and like, some white squat racks, and red squat racks and you know different stuff yeah. and, like we had yellow spray painted platforms mm -hmm. and things I remember that. so it was only really when we moved to the big gym that we have in north liverpool that we kind of went all in on the, okay. the all black yes like more sleep spending a few grand on painting <laughs> the yeah. things right okay. it's better than me doing it though, yeah so. okay um so yeah that, that's something that we're definitely focused on more mm -hmm. and i think the reason for that, if you're interested, is um, obviously for bigger brands and stuff like that, the branding is important for us because this independent gym space was quite new, mm. quite young. Mm. The, um, and probably the, last thing they did thinking about is branding. Yeah, right? I mean, like as a as a business thing, mm. it, you know, there's not a lot of businessmen in this industry, or they don't start out as the same as me. You open because your coach, you think are. Oh, I can do it better than this gym that I work at does it somewhere over my own thing. <coughs> so because it's quite a young industry, what I think is like to start with the novelty of pushing a prowler, mm. having the artificial mm. grass, mm. T uh, mm. flipping tires and stuff like that was kind of enough. Because mm. mm. it's like, oh, they're different because of that specific thing. So for us, that worked well. Because it was always compared to the commercial gym. Yeah, exactly. Never had that. yeah. exactly. But now, years down the line, there's 
a lot of other facilities like ours in terms of how it looks and feels or how it looked and feel, felt when we first started. Mm. So that gives you the, mm. the novelty factor's kind of gone because mm. everywhere has a prowler and mm. everywhere uses sledgehammers mm. and stuff Commercial like gyms have those. Exactly, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm going to say. And then even yeah. the JDs, pure gyms, mm. they have the so-called mm. functional fitness space mm. without rigs like these Correct. and Correct. all that kind of stuff. So that's not a differentiating mm. factor anymore. Yeah. So that means that, in my opinion, this kind of industry for independent gyms needs to be elevated mm. and you need to not only give a better level of service and results and coaching mm. than you know the more commercial gyms but you also need to match their level of how the facility looks and feels and stuff like that because they've got marketing managers mm. they've got marketing teams exactly. which are a lot of independent gyms just that's the last thing people think because you've got people through the door you kind of have got what you needed but it doesn't really matter if it's yellow yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah. and it didn't a while ago, but yeah. now I think that it does. There needs to be mm. no compromises. I've, I've mm. chatted to you about this personally mm. before. Mm. We've said, you know, we've refitted out the gyms and redone things, and we'll continue to do so. It's not at the highest standard yet, but mm. we, you know, we're getting there and working towards it. But I don't mm. want it to be a compromise. Mm. I don't mm. want people to go, oh, yeah, it's great here because the results are good, the coach is great, the atmosphere, but it's a little bit scruffy, it's a little bit. Okay. The, the equipment's old and stuff like that um, so you know it's nicer at uh, JD uh, or uh, wherever, uh, wherever so we want that not to be a compromise so we're working towards I mean this facility is exactly like that or the one in North Liverpool is going through a bit of an upgrade um, just to get it up to standard uh, with this one I guess because this is a brand new mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. so that's something that's had to happen and that comes with that is like the branding side of things you know mm-hmm. we have to <clears throat> make sure everything looks and feels a certain way it's mm. congruent from the Facebook content mm. you know Instagram mm. and social media and everything right through the website into how it feels in the gym and the language is all the same like mm. people are, yeah, even yeah. the coaches yes. are, everyone speaks the same kind of language yeah. to, the, yeah. to the clients and stuff like that okay. so yeah I think that's, that's become massively more important and that's something that we've definitely focused on like branding has been a, a big thing and whilst there's no direct return on investment it definitely makes a difference. So, mm. and so you said wow when you walked in here this morning. You know what I mean, so that makes yeah. a difference. First true, impression. True, so. true. Right, I think uh, that's a good place to stop the first part because there is second part. I want to talk to you about other things like your team, mm-hmm. which is very interesting and uh, intriguing to me because uh, it's something that um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of trying to grow uh, and also think about. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you later what I, what I think about. Uh, so, so the team uh, is, is definitely, um, uh, I want to talk to you about. Also, the sort of, um, why am I still fat? That kind of question, which is important about, uh, you know, why other people are still fat? Like, you know, so, so that's, so we're going to go, maybe a bit woo-woo, we'll see. We'll see where those are going to take us. Uh, good, right, let's finish the first part. We'll see you in the second part, in a second. Hello and welcome to the second part of this, uh, I would say, interview with no purpose apart from talking about how to crush it in business, I guess, and how to, how to, how to make sure that whatever business you start makes sense and uh, makes money. I think that's the most important. So we're going to be, we're going to be walking right now and showing you a bit of facilities well. But most importantly, I want to talk to you about the team because, yeah. because you had a huge success with the team, I think. Well, would you say that? Uh, yeah, I would oh, say oh, that. Yeah, especially they, they listen in and they are obviously going to agree with you right <laughs> now. They're going to be awkward if you're going to say no, right? Absolutely. But, it's, uh, but it's, okay, A, ha, all ex-rugby players, all rugby players, uh, how, how did you find them? Uh, where were they from? Like, how... how how, how did you find them? Because having a good team, there is always, you know, Bob doesn't like John, and John doesn't like <laughs> Brian, and all of a sudden you've got issue, right? But for yeah. the last two, three years, you had core team the same, Yes, yeah. our team has largely mm. uh, ex-members. Mm-hmm. So like John, not a lot of people know that, was actually a member at Steel Habs at first, before he... I did not know. Yeah, yeah, before he became okay. a coach. Okay. And he became a coach just out of necessity, really. Okay. Um, because his old, his old gym kicked him out or something. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who can I get to kind of cover me? And John had done a similar kind of path to me in terms uh-huh. of education and sport and stuff like that. So 
we put, I just asked him to kind of take, take some coaching sessions just to let me die at uh-huh, home kind uh-huh, of thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he did that, and then that's, for John, that's just developed from there. The same for Martin, he, uh-huh, yeah, okay. he did the same. He was, he was a coach for us, he was a member at Steel for a year or so, and then we were looking for someone else, and he was interested in getting involved. Mm. He did some, like an internship program that mm-hmm. we run, he went through mm-hmm. that, did some coaching, and then mm-hmm. we eventually hired him full time. Callum is exactly the same, and Callum's been one of my best friends for a, a lot of years now, but he was a member first, you know, really. um, and then obviously he has a role at the, at the gym and in the company, and then we just hired another guy, Tom, who's, again, he, he's actually a, a rugby player as well, I think, mm-hmm. um, or he's certainly involved coaching mm-hmm. um, rugby players. And he's just come on board, and then we have Adam, who's uh, still a master's student. Otherwise, he would be full time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he came through our internship program. So, to be honest, we were really lucky with the team. And <laughs> I hear people talk about like team building and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and how to make it work mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. And I think, fuck, in like a big way, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. You are. You um, in a big way, we're we're kind of lucky in how everyone's kind of fit together. But at the same time. We put a lot of time and effort into making sure that, that works and making sure yeah. everyone feels important, is important, and knows how to work together, who's what responsibilities, can communicate properly mm. with each other and stuff like that. So, and credit to the lads, like, they put a lot of work in on that too, because, like you say, it's not, I would imagine it's not always easy, especially mm. for a group of guys to work together and to kind of like humble enough in a way to, mm ask for mm. each other's help mm. and give mm. each other advice mm. and support mm. each other and stuff like that because um, you know it can be quite ego driven mm. absolutely with guys for absolutely. sure <clears throat> i'm sure i'm sure there is a bit of competition between uh, the coaches themselves about who can do what and who can you know what right. <laughs> I don't, there's, there actually isn't no. right, I mean, okay. Okay. there's friendly stuff in terms of weightlifting and things yeah. like that but generally it's, it's like genuine support mm-hmm. amongst the team, but that's one of my main roles is to make sure that that is the case, you know what I mean? Make sure that everyone is working together, is singing up the ha- same mm-hmm. hymn sheet, and we're mm-hmm. all like pushing towards like a common kind of goal. Okay. And we, we put a lot of time into that. I talked about that on, on our podcast. Mm-hmm. We did a, an episode on that just to give people a bit of an insight into it. Send me a link, I'll, uh, I'll link <laughs> yeah. it up. Why not? You know, if people are interested in how, how yeah. your team works, you know. Well, yeah, we, put, we mm-hmm. put a huge amount of time into it. And how do you keep works. people sort of happy? I know you said it make them important, make them sort of do things that you, mm-hmm. but it's inevitably they want to do more. They want to have a bigger piece of that yeah. big cake that you've got. Let well, them. Yeah, you, no, it's yeah. true. Like, yeah, what yeah. do you do? Like, what yeah, do you do? Really? I mean, for me, I have a constant dialogue with all the people at work. Because you need to figure out what they want. That's the that's the yeah, difficult. And one. the best way yeah. to do it is just ask them what yeah. they want. Like yeah. that's a, a thing that I'm constantly asking the guys is like, are you happy with things at the minute? How are things going? And then one of the kind of three questions I'm always asking them is like, what do you want to what do you want to stop doing? Is there anything you don't want to want to do anymore? What do you love and want to continue doing? And is there anything that you want to start doing, like something that you're passionate about that you've not mm. quite like mm, mm. got your finger in that pie yet and you want to mm. have a go at kind of thing? And then trying to deliver on that mm. with for them, do you know what I mean? Okay. Like, <clears throat> like Callum as an example, uh, he started off and, you know, he's a coach, we're trying to get him up to speed on the sales stuff at the start of last year when he first joined. And more and more, he's obviously doing exceptionally well on that side of things, like business side of stuff. And he wants to do that more. So we're working to. Mm make that happen, you know what I mean? Like, that's what he wants to be involved in. The same with, with John's an easy example as well. He, he wants to be like the head of the coaches, develop those, make sure everyone's up to speed in terms of their coaching style and knowledge and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. let him do that and also let them really take ownership over it, you know, not micromanage people, obviously guide them so that everything fits mm-hmm. with what you want to happen for the company and stuff and make sure they understand what direction they should be going mm. and everything mm. but at the same time let them take mm. control it's a hard thing to do mm. like i had a lot of trouble mm. delegating things when i first brought john on board because you feel like oh I can, I can do it better than I, I i can think i can do everything better than paula so uh, yeah. but but I, I know i can but i you know but it's true like it, how yeah. do you leave some of the bits and just be okay with them how they are yeah i think to start with you have to tell yourself that you, you know 
your 100% might be the perfect version mm. for you, mm. but someone else's 90% mm. might not be exactly what mm. you want, but to the person who's like consuming the content or they don't really see there's difference. not going to be much difference, mm. you know what I mean? So mm. you have to take your ego out of it. And, and also accept that a lot of times, some people will do things better than you. Like yeah. John does, John Martin and Callum all do their specific roles now better than I could do them. <laughs> so I'm Good like, figure, right? great, I'm just gonna try and guide them and give them the tools they need to keep developing and improving and getting what they want out of the company. Because mm. whilst we're a service-based business that, you know, our, one of our primary roles is to improve the lives of our clients, mm. customers and mm. members, mm. I, I don't want that to be at the detriment of the Mm. myself mm. and the mm. staff yeah, of course. so I want people to always feel like they're getting what they want out of it um, and then it's my job to deliver that do you know what I mean Make what's, sure. the, what's the biggest challenge uh, in terms of team uh, for you as the business owner you know are you thinking are you, are you, you haven't got enough team members you've got enough uh, <coughs> have you got enough tasks like because all of a sudden the last thing you want is end up looking at um, are the tasks that you have to do, the people that you've got, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, but I'm only filling up 50% of their time. Yeah. Like, how do you then sort of, yeah, how, how, do you ever come across that? Like, yeah, how definitely. do you, that, that can be what's a the challenge one. for you in terms of, you know, running the team? Yeah, that, and that can be a tricky one. Sometimes, you know, is there going to be enough work for this person to do? Mm. Mm. And sometimes there isn't when you first bring someone on board full time, it's like, there probably isn't enough, but I really need this person mm. around. Mm. and in six months time when we've hit these business goals or we've developed in this way then there will be enough for that person to do so sometimes you have to take the in my opinion anyway you have to take that plunge and just be like right i don't need them i need them maybe 70 percent of the time right now but i'm going to hire them anyway mm -hmm. because i feel like they can add value to mm -hmm. this specific thing mm -hmm. and then going forward they're going to become more valuable like um, so basically taking a risk that yeah, it's like it's kind of it's punt like, yeah. that it's like okay I like the guy he's decent or girl yeah. uh, and you're like okay I can see them working with the rest of the team yeah I think there's enough for me to sort of go yeah. at right because I think for like should we just have a look yeah, where yeah. for we had a guy we hired a couple of years ago uh, well Martin we hired Martin uh -huh. and at the time we didn't need we didn't necessarily need another completely full-time person. Uh -huh. So when he came on board, Martin's role was, outside of coaching, was fairly unclear. And that was kind of a mistake I made. I didn't really clarify exactly what I wanted yeah, to do yeah. outside of coaching. So I think he was sometimes at a bit, a bit of a dead end of like, oh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. But we needed a coach, you know what I mean? And we wouldn't have been able to have Martin because he was working full-time in another job. It wouldn't have worked uh, mm. having mm. part time. It just yeah. wouldn't have worked. So yeah. we had to take the punt. Because he'd be right. half committed, right? <coughs> he'd be well. He just wouldn't be available for the hours mm. that we needed him. So mm. I was like, oh, we're gonna have to take the punt on hiring someone full time because it's gonna fit the specific role, and then we'll develop the rest later, kind of thing. And now, like, mine's a massively important part of the team. He's gonna be heading up the coaching at the North Liverpool gym uh -huh. uh, going forward, and he deals with a lot of our back end systems and payments uh -huh. and stuff like uh -huh. that. And he's very, very good at all that, and like that's worked out. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. sometimes you do have to just take a bit of a, a bit of a. You have to hire people early sometimes. Yeah. I think okay. like we don't fully need this role just yet, but what can it move into? Kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit. Of, it can be a contradiction because obviously you want to try and keep your company running as lean as possible, mm -hmm. as few expenses as mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. as as is needed. But sometimes that's. Uh, what would you say if you had to give? One advice to someone who's on their own, they've got lots of on their plate, but they're doing their own marketing, they're doing their own graphic design, whatever, you know, they are graphic designers, they're doing their own marketing, doing the other stuff themselves. Like, what would you say for those people who are thinking of having another team? Should they just go for it? Should they hire part time, VA, freelancers? Like, where do, where do we go? I mean, what would you say? There's tons of options, okay. obviously, but what I'd start with is listing out everything that you do, mm -hmm. like within the company, like what, what do I actually do? Mm -hmm. So it's content creation, mm -hmm. there's paid advertising, mm -hmm. there's you know, back end sales, whatever it is, list it all Packing, out. Packing, delivering, yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. List it all out and be like, this is everything that happens. Mm -hmm. And then start off with like, which ones of these 
don't I need to do mm -hmm. and which ones could be done like effectively by somebody else mm -hmm. and then also weigh up like oh, how much time is that gonna free me up to do like maybe you describe it as more higher value tasks so mm -hmm. you know a, for you as an example picking packing mm -hmm. and shipping and all that kind of stuff well would your time be better spent doing I'm not saying I don't know yeah. if that's what you still yeah. do but would your time be better spent doing Videos. more content creation yeah. or mm -hmm on the phone, mm -hmm. developing relationships with this person, that person, this distributor and all these kind of things, like that is going to be more valuable to you and the company mm -hmm. than spending, you know, two, three, four hours packing stuff up, sure. shipping it out, sure. taking it to be delivered or wherever. Um, so I'd start off with that and be like, you know, the... What you don't have to do, what yeah, sort of tasks you what's can... What's the, the lowest value tasks? Okay. And would you say... VA sort of in the Philippines or, or more like a, a, a physical person. I yeah. went physical person route so you can have a coach, you yeah. can talk to them, they can be around you, they can learn, they can understand your values and things like that rather than having a virtual assistant. I know it was a boom at some point for virtual yeah. everyone had a virtual assistant, but I think they're right now going back into like, oh, okay, hold on a second, uh, I think we need to. Yeah, I like physical people. Physical people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes most sense, like having the people around you who can truly understand, like, what you're trying to achieve yeah. and be on board with it and just That's advertise that that you're looking for someone and see if there's anyone yeah in your start with the people you know if you yeah. can do you know what I mean I mean if you're only hiring one two three people mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. You know, for jobs that are maybe not, you know, like skilled jobs, like not yeah. paid advertising, like you're asking them to do certain things, right? Yeah, but everything's teachable as well, because what you're thinking yeah. is like, yeah, okay. as we started talking here, when I opened the business, I didn't know anything about Facebook advertising, mm -hmm. or marketing, or yeah. sales, or sure. team building, but I've learned how to do it, so mm -hmm. that means that someone else can learn how to do it true, too, true. so we, we tend to hire the person more yeah. than for a specific role True. and then teach True. them the, True. to be like what you know for us as an example coach it, we need coaches at the gym so yeah I mean it's useful to have someone who obviously understands the science and background behind nutrition and training and stuff like that but it's not always absolutely necessary because we can teach you those mm -hmm. things what we can't teach you have to be just just good dude though. yeah Gal, we right? can't teach you how to be yeah. a nice person yeah. who's empathetic True. has True. compassion can True. communicate well and all those kind of like they're a little bit harder traits to get across to someone than just teaching you how mm. the mm. functions of training and nutrition and how our programs and systems work so we tend to hire on those kind of principles of personality and stuff more than not it's like with uh, like Callum who does most of our sales mm. he'd never done any sales stuff before he joined Steel, but we're like, well, he's charismatic, he's mm. like likeable. quite charming, yeah. he's likable, all that kind of thing. So we're like, he's charming. Yeah. So we're like, well, I can, we can teach him, yeah. and he can learn and continue to develop himself on those things based around the personality traits that he has that seem to fit well with this particular role. Mm. So I mean, for us anyway, that's how we've always done, the, done the hiring and tended to hire people that we know or already have. Mm. Mm. some contact with not always and as we keep growing now that's not going to be um, but, not going to be an option as much but it's but true like you well, probably over the years you you probably had one bad hire I know of which we're not going to mention but it's but apart from that like you were you were doing really well for that so so it's yeah. it's it's a combination of luck and a talent for you to find those people it's like like you have to try right you have to yeah, try and see what happens you'll get it wrong because like yeah. we've I wouldn't say anyone was like a bad hire necessarily, mm -hmm. but we've, we've had people who have like asked to leave the company, numerous people in fact, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but I take that a lot of the time as that, that was my just, responsibility. Yeah, Either was, we, didn't, we, just, yeah. we didn't do very well on like the hiring process, or we didn't and, get and you maybe didn't didn't exactly exactly well have enough time yeah, to sort of show them things. Yeah. 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 True. Like, there's, there's someone in particular who, we got rid of um, a, guy, a young guy and he didn't, uh, we just didn't give him the support they needed. And he didn't do very well in the role, but also like when I look back at it immediately after, I was like, I'm not surprised because yeah. we didn't give yeah. him what he needed. You just to, left him on your own. Yeah, we just it was like, get on with this. Yeah. And then we're kind of surprised and upset when he didn't do particularly well. And then the lessons that I've learned definitely is like those kind of things of, they're down to me, even when maybe sometimes it might not 100% be down to me. Um, 
and you've got to take responsibility for it because mm. yeah, that's stuff I've messed up numerous times and I'm sure I'll do it again. Mm. Um, but it's good, good to sort of a list those. I think we need to do that as well uh, and then to find a sort of list all of those things. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. And maybe that's going to give us clarity on, on who else do we need yeah, and who else we, we like, have to do. So. What are these things that can be grouped together? Do you know what I mean? Like content stuff and good. posting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Last final question. Okay. Why, why, why am I fat still? And I, I won't say that you're fat, Michael. Well, I <laughs> show you. That I'm right. Um, it's important. Let's just, let's just move around so we can show the, the rest of the gym as well. Um, are we, have we got this? Are we still doing it? Yes. Um, so, why am I fat? And that's a sort of general question on... Why, like, we know what to do. You know you, you, know you have to do 100 sit-ups. Yeah. You know you have to do... You have to come to the gym five times a week. You know you have... Like, we know this. Like, we don't... I don't need you telling me <laughs> from Facebook ads that I need to come to... The, I know this. Yeah. So why am I fat? I mean, that's a, a very broad question that, that there are a lot of answers to. Um, well, why people, well, it's, it's, it's I mean, motivation, the, it's the goals that you're setting, yeah. is it the... What, is, I think is, maybe a blanket answer that you could mm. apply to a lot of people mm. would be the pain of making a change, mm -hmm. or the pain of staying the same isn't like bigger than the pain of making a change, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, if you're feeling like pretty comfortable, you're like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being a little bit leaner or losing a stone or wherever. But if you're not like really hating where you are, mm. enough to go and put the extra effort and all, because it is extra effort to go and train and mm. track your food and mm. do all those kind of things. If like you're not feeling so negatively about yourself, mm. I say to then go and do that, then you're gonna stay the same, do you know what I mean? And okay. that, but is it our mind that it's <coughs> telling us, ah, even if you've got a bit of belly, you're like, ah, like, you look at my dad, my dad looks worse than me. Like, is it, is it that your mind is telling you, and you probably hear that from your members as well, like, you've got, you've got all sides, it was actually a very good point, I wanna to talk to you about this as well, like, we, me and my wife went to the gym the other day, uh, to one of your gyms, and there was, what struck us, and we never sort of thought about this before, is that you've got all sides and shapes of people. Yeah. And it was just, they all together, and that was, and I'm thinking, okay, so they obviously working towards one goal, mm -hmm. to whatever that one goal is, you know, leaner, stronger, whatever else. And it's, and I thought, okay, so why they, all of them, not going to end up being skinny model on, on, on Instagram? Why? They, you know, at some point, three months down the line, they're going to be like, ah, you know, that's it. And they're going to be halfway through. Yeah. Or like me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but I, I could have a lot less fat if I, yeah. if I really pushed. Or, or could I? Like, you know, yeah. so it's like I'm, I'm comfortable enough in that space, what you said. That, that, that that's it. it. It's just the comfort of it mm. versus the extra effort, pain, mm. effort to mm. go further, if that makes sense. Mm. So, like for me, I'm like in reasonably good shape mm -hmm. the large majority of the time but I could definitely mm -hmm. be like super ripped like more muscular and stuff like that but I'm quite comfortable with how yeah. I look do you know what I mean yeah. so I'm like you know what I, I like the level of training that I do I train like three to five sessions a week mm -hmm. I enjoy training the large majority of the time mm -hmm. I'm happy with the food that I eat yeah and are you tracking yeah i always track it but then to go to like the next level of like you men's health mm. cover model shredded mm. then that's an that's another step of like discipline and dedication and i don't want that enough to mm. take those steps because i'm happy where i am and mm. i think that's that's probably a, mm. a lot of the reason for most people why they stay the same is like they're happy or comfortable mm. where mm. they are and then the moment that they feel uncomfortable with that, that's when they generally make a change. Yeah. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. So you've got, have you got members who are coming in and out from, from you? So, so like, oh, they, they two months in, you know, lose a bit of fat, get motivated, you know, ah, yeah, ring that bell a few times, yes, and then the, yeah, there's always six that. months you cannot see them ever, and they stop paying, and they, they, they come off your, yeah. your, your payroll if you like, and then they, they, they come back, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, let's do it again. Yeah, there's, al do you there's, see those there's always that for sure, and that's kind of our job is to mm. 
try and minimize that for mm. people mm. so that people are as constantly as possible mm. living that mm. kind of mm. healthier lifestyle so to speak mm. so that's kind of what we're always aiming to do but yeah absolutely I mean life gets in the way do you yeah, know what I mean absolutely. like stuff happens yeah. and people drop out of training like uh, as you know like mm. you've done that yeah. I, I've done it True. on numerous time, mm. numerous occasions where I'm like Oh, I've only trained like twice this week. Like yeah. when we were opening yeah. this gym, yeah. Yeah. like over the three, four weeks that that was really going on, like full on. And I wasn't getting in that and training as much, and I wasn't tracking my food as much because I was more just, preoccupied yeah. and busy mm. with other mm. things. So stuff like that does happen, but the the trick is and the key is to kind of be self aware enough to realize that that's happened and then course correct and not mm. let like a blip just kind of. Completely fucked yeah, all up. Yeah, then all of a sudden you say, nah, yeah, I'm in the gym twice this, yeah. this week, so may as well just not turn up next yeah, week. Yeah, that, that's what we're for here and mm. all the coaches mm. and stuff is to try and keep people on track as much as possible and mm. give the support and guidance and accountability mm. Mm. and create an environment that people want to be at the gym. Mm. Like they miss it when they're not here. That's what we really want to aim for because, you know, unless you get a massive buzz out of like training all the time, you might not miss being in... Mm. you know your average commercial gym mm. other than the feeling of training but True. we're trying to create a community and an atmosphere where people are like fuck I, I missed those people and yeah. that gym and how everything happens there so they actually enjoy mm. Mm. exercise as well which is a big part I think that can play a part in it it's like you know you go to a commercial gym you have no support or guidance and if you don't really know what you're doing or you don't really have any knowledge of that kind of thing it's like Ugh, I'm not really getting results because I don't really know what I'm doing there's lots of bright lights there's lots of mirrors I'm not feeling particularly comfortable like it's, it's a poor experience for a lot of people and then that makes it easier to be like oh well, it's not so bad I'll just you know I'll stay on the couch mm. or I'll stay home I won't do anything about mm. how I'm feeling and you can kind of maybe even start to justify why it's okay because that experience because was was a bad experience. It only cost you twelve pounds ninety nine a month. Yeah, exactly. But what's the what's the longer term cost? You know. Yeah, I mean? but it's like people think, oh, I I I can afford this, even paying and not going. Yeah. Therefore, I'll, I'll just you know I'll just keep paying and maybe one day I'll go. Yeah, right? exactly. It but must that, be done as well. That's why we just try and create a different experience where mm. people like to be here. They have the support, and guidance, and results that mm. that they need and want and they get that experience because mm. like no one wants to have a bad you don't want to have a bad experience when you spend money on anything do you mm. know what I mean mm. not least like your own mm. health and fitness mm. Mm. so like I think we've done a good job of making it so people actually like being around mm. us and the mm-hmm. gym and mm-hmm. all that and then it's almost like the results and stuff is like a byproduct of just being here and being part of the whole mm-hmm. thing so so the results just will come <laughs> as long as you turn up yeah, and do what's on the board just just get on yeah, with it, if right? You, if you follow, follow the system, and mm. we do our best to make sure that you follow the system, mm. and we try and make it really simple. To, obviously, there's effort required, but simple to implement into your life. So, like, it's just a part of your life, not your whole life. Do you know mm. what I mean? You're not like mm. I'm on a health kick, and that yeah, means yeah, that yeah. I'm, I'm not drinking for the next six weeks, and I'm because not doing it's this, no, not you know, it's that. not sustainable in the sort of Western world where you've got you've got a job, and that job sends you two weeks away, and before you know, exactly. you're like, it's not, yeah. it's not going to happen. So our goal for a long time has been, how can we integrate health and fitness into people's lives in a way that's enjoyable? Mm. Mm sustainable and manageable for mm. them so you like it just becomes what you do mm. it doesn't feel like a chore it doesn't feel like you're on a 28 day detox mm. to mm. just Juice. lose some weight yeah. it's like uh-huh. yeah. going to the gym and eating well and stuff is part just part of what I'm doing mm. a big part of that is making sure that it's flexible and like so you can go out and eat at the weekend yeah. you can go out and have some beers or gin or whatever like that can all fit so, in and, and mm. we not only like preach that but we make it happen as well because we take people out <laughs> and we take them to you know, uh, like yes, the I, pizza I, place we have and experienced that yes exactly and part of that is making sure that it's authentically yes. happening and not just mm. advice so we're not just mm. saying to people Don't oh yeah you, can, you yeah. can you can do this like yeah, you yeah. can have pizza mm. if you want mm. it'll be fine mm. it's like oh we're gonna show you how you can yeah. do it well, we'll take you out and show you how you can yeah. do this kind you of can thing still do it. So you can still get results, but also like not feel 
like it's at the detriment to your life, your social life. Obviously, there's times when you have to, you know, rein it in a little bit and be a bit more considerate about what you're doing and consuming and stuff like that. But generally, we want to show there's that flexibility and make. You know, make it so, if someone wants that. to um, lose some <coughs> weight, mm -hmm. um, five kilograms for the summer, <coughs> right? So they're ready to sort of put put in some work. Uh -huh. What sort of what would you say they would have to do first? Um, sign up to your gym, a gym, uh, start tracking through. What's this sort of number one thing they have to do every day to sort of start, uh, sort of be on the right path yeah. to, to lose that? You know, yeah. over three months, let's say. Yeah. You know? Let's say there's a few things is find someone somewhere who can coach you on some very basic strength training, so mm -hmm. squats, deadlifts. Like literally paying pushes, for a couple of sessions to, yeah, to, to, or, to teach you the technique. Yeah, to, or really watch a, watch a YouTube video okay. and get your friend to watch you and tell you if you're doing it the same as the video. You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to mm -hmm. cost you a lot of money. Like, uh -huh. learn how to do some strength training because yeah. the benefits from that are endless, really. And mm -hmm. then in terms of actually changing your body composition, um, tracking your food is the most important thing. If you want to lose body weight, body fat, then you need to be in a calorie deficit. And... And again, there is a lot of information online for free. There's a lot. You, you just go you just follow go, our Instagram yeah. page. Yeah, exactly. And, go, that's the and it's going to tell you how, how, tell how you much you need, you need to eat, how much you need to train, how often, what lifts do you have to do. Because you don't do videos as such in, instructional video, do you? No, not really yeah. in terms of exercises and mm. stuff. Because um, obviously we coach that at the gym yeah. and a lot of our information out there is like training. It's probably still on Instagram. Like, yeah, there's lots of stuff yeah. on there. But yeah. I'd just say, yeah, get get tracking your food you need to be in a calorie deficit so it makes sense to uh actually track your calories and make sure that that's happened um not using any other method to try and guess your way there mm. i think mm. i said in an email the other day it's like if you want to save 10 pound a day in your like piggy bank or whatever then it makes sense to just count out the 10 pounds mm. rather than just like grabbing a handful and hoping for the best and that's mm. the difference between tracking and mm. maybe using like portion sizes it's fucking good all that kind of that's stuff that's good <laughs> yeah, I like that yeah. you just go, you go that's good. track what you're trying to track if you're trying uh -huh. to track calorie, inta calorie intake then track mm. that do you mm. know what I mean don't mm. try and guess your way you can yeah, use yeah. some other method mm. um, but find something that you enjoy to do like you need to is running okay is playing football okay is playing basketball okay the, or, is it, or is it still let's focus on strength training because that's what gives us the sort of quickest return in yeah. terms of because it's all body it's it's you know you lift it heavy so the recovery is longer and whatever you for, know um, you burn calories while it's recovering and whatever for that end goal that a lot of people have a physical end goal at mm. least of generally anyone who comes to us regardless of what um condition they're in at the, mm. the present mm. time whether mm. they're skinny whether they're mm. overweight wherever generally if you ask them what your what they want to look like physically. They might have other goals and stuff, of course, but everyone kind of has the same end goal, even if they're like mm. overweight or slim or mm. wherever. It's like everyone wants to be leaner. More, mus more muscular, a little bit leaner, like mm. that athletic y mm. kind of look. That's mm. the majority of people, mm. in my experience. So, for that, like, we like strength training, as you can tell, obviously, with mm. all the equipment that's in here and stuff. So it kind of depends what your goal is. If, if it is that, which is quite normal for a lot of people, then yeah, strength training is a, an important factor. But there's a lot of ways to do that and you want to find the one that's fun for you. Some people like um, circuit classes. Yes, some people course. like yeah, to do yeah. CrossFit. Some yeah. people like powerlifting style training, strong one stuff. Find the one that you enjoy the most. Mm. But to answer your question, of like, mm. is cycling okay and basketball okay it's like yeah whatever you like to do mm, mm. but understand that that's going to have different like if you just try and lose weight and maybe body fat then just doing some cycling cardio okay. cycling stuff mm. like that is fine but if you want to like build some muscle and get stronger and all that then it's not going to happen from, from, from just yeah, yeah just so, doing 20 miles a, a day on a bike yeah exactly so that's my that's my preference and what we mm. advise but generally like find something that you enjoy to do and track your food and that's going to help you lose weight mm. and or you know mm. fat mm. whatever you kind of aim cool. Cool. Yeah, so. no it's good I like that uh, shall we just uh, show whoever is watching this uh, rather than listening to this which we're going to uh, end up sort of using the YouTube uh, link uh, in the podcast as well so people yeah. can see it 
But like, this is the smaller gym. We have to, you know, this is the, yeah, yeah, this, this is the, this is the, this is the newer, but the smaller facility, right? Yeah. Uh, so what else we've got? We've got five, five squat racks. What else we've got there? Uh, we've got, we've got some. The, oh yeah, we've got the the the, the prowlers, and artificial grass. It's all dead simple. It's stuff we have at the gym, like all of our gym. So mm. kettlebells, mm -hmm. there's tons of plates we got all down there, and uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, dumbbells, slam balls, benches. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. That's all you need, right? <laughs> yeah, that's well for the style of training that we do, mm. and yeah, that's pretty much all you need. Just barbells, weights, and then some accessory stuff like dumbbells, yeah. kettlebells, slam balls. So it's amazing how, because at some point I remember in the past there was, uh, yeah, you know, you're talking 10 years plus probably, there was this huge push on those multi machines that you had yeah. at home or whatever, in the in home gym or whatever, and you like do everything in one like <laughs> massive machine. But really, you need a squat rack probably and you know, a few dumbbells yeah, and then I mean, you would do the same. Exactly. I mean, if, you, if everyone's going to have a home gym, they'd mm. just be like, get a squat rack. Yeah. Bar yeah. and some of these weights that are yeah. in the parlor and, then and you can probably do a lot more. You can do more. pretty much everything. Yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah. Good. Very, very simple setup, but it works for us and allows us to do what we are, what we want people to do. Getting leaner, stronger, get exactly. probably yeah. happier as well. That's that's the sort of end goal, right? Yeah. Sort of making sure that they are just. Just general life just, improvements. Just general life improvements. Yeah. They're happy with uh, with their <laughs> lives, so they come back to you and sort of enjoy this small. Brilliant, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, we, uh, we obviously fought. Give me a hug, <laughs> give me a hug. Uh, this is what I like about this guy because it's, uh, you, you, you're kind of normal still. Like you... Uh, I have no reason not to be. <laughs> no, no, in a, no, in a way that, uh, yeah, a lot of people would look at your business and stuff you do and say, He's a successful man, you know, but, but I know it's for you, it doesn't really matter that much because you've got your own goals. You wanna, I always you feel wanna... unsatisfied with yeah. things, so I never, I never have that, like, oh, we're so great kind mm. of thing, because mm. we're always looking forward and trying to, mm. we've still got plan, plans to grow and mm. things we want to do and stuff like that, so great. I don't look no, back good. too much. No, it's good. So, um, you know, I know. Uh, that you're probably gonna be opening a few more gyms, and I'm I'm sure about that. You know, you're nothing gonna stop you from doing it. So, uh, but it's good. I mean, you, it, it seems as if you've got the formula for that. Uh, like, you know, the first gym was the test. Yeah. Now the second gym is just the confirmation That's that a works. Long, a long, difficult uh, test. Know, yeah, <laughs> and then you know the third and fourth one could be just yeah. plug and play. Who knows? Yeah, in a way. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Good. We'll see. Great. Thank you so much.